It is only the 1st of October and the 1st October surprise is already here. That might be a bombastic way to <laughs> approach this topic, but you never know. There's this massive new strike and it could be the sort of thing that affects an election, perhaps even swings an election, but let's jump into it. So we have a coast-wide strike of dock workers from Maine to Texas, 36 ports, thousands of workers involved in it across the Eastern US now on strike for the first time in literally decades. And obviously, all of the major ports along an entire coast, super important for products coming in and everything. So if it's shut down, if it's shut down for a while, that's gonna have an actual effect, especially if it lasts for weeks or maybe even months. I mean, we're only a month away from the election. So as many as, as an example, 75% of the nation's imported bananas come through ports on the East and Gulf coasts. Uh, so that means that if those are already on their way, they might not be able to be offloaded. That's a lot of money. I guess bananas are big business, I suppose. I mean, how much could a banana cost, $10? A storm is tearing up the digital media industry. Only our audience can save us in these difficult times. Help us reach our goal of 100,000 new members at tyt.com slash team. But anyway, um, and this might be bad news, not only for the economy and the various industries that rely on access to those ports, but also for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Uh, but that said, there's a reason that the strike is going on. And there's a reason that these workers that are apparently so crucial to the economy that if they stop working, the economy loses four and a half billion dollars a day, feel that they need to strike. And so I wanna talk about both sides of this. First, politically, uh, Harris, uh, on the topic of the economy, trailed Trump by just three percentage points among American adults recently. She had narrowed the gap over Joe Biden to Donald Trump. But if the economy suddenly takes a big hit from this, then that could affect how people evaluate her on that topic. And it is one of the most important topics um, of the election. And bear in mind, by the way, if she comes out super hard against the strike, that could hurt her amongst union workers, a group that she's already not doing as well as past Democrats have. Uh, according to Harry Enten of CNN, right now she is on track to do the worst any Democrat has done in a generation among union voters. Now she's still up plus nine over Trump, but Hillary was at plus 12, and that was the second worst that any Democrat um, had done. So that's not necessarily great. So it's a difficult situation. If the strike goes on for a really long time, that could hurt the economy and that could hurt the Democrats, theoretically. Uh, if they try to shut down the strikes or you know speak out against them, then that could hurt them amongst that group as well. And so let's turn now to the actual demands of the International Longshoremen's Association. So they're asking for a $5 an hour raise for each of the six years of a new contract, meaning that by 2030, they would be at $69 an hour, a 77% raise. They also want better benefits and they're opposing the use of automated technologies at ports that theoretically would lead to fewer jobs. So that is a very significant raise. I cannot, you know, I can't contextualize that in terms of how necessary it is. That is what they are pushing for. And again, they have proven to be incredibly important to the economy if shutting down their workplaces does that much damage on a daily basis. Now, apparently, the United States Maritime Alliance had made a final proposal before the strike that was rejected by the union. And they say the USMX brought on this strike, this is the union saying it, when they decided to hold firm to foreign owned ocean carriers earning billion dollar profits at United States ports, but not compensate the American longshore workers who perform the labor that brings them their wealth. So basically they're saying there's a ton of money that's being made at these ports and not nearly enough of it, enough of it is going to the people who are actually offloading or you know, loading the actual cargo. Now, what could actually happen to resolve this? Well. Theoretically, the industry could give in either on the demands that are being made or theoretically some sort of compromise, which is generally how these things go. Alternatively, President Biden could prevent or halt the strike using the 1947 Taft-Hartley Act. Uh, if he did that, some people, I guess, economically would be happy about that. Obviously, the, the, the union and other unions probably would be pretty opposed to that. I do want to let you know that as of right now, he was asked about it and he says he, quote, doesn't believe in Taft Hartley. He doesn't uh, think that it would be appropriate to come in and shut down the strike. And so that's a good sign if you want the Democrats to actually take the side of labor, maybe help to manage this and come up with a better deal for the longshoremen. Um, that said, if it goes on for a while, he didn't swear that he would never invoke Taft-Hartley, so remains to be seen. But again, it's another X factor out there in the election.